Sagittarius. So this is for the sun in Sagittarius or for the rising sign. And I'm bringing you five key points, five key dates and five key life areas to tell you how to manage and handle the astrological energies for the month of August 2024. Let's get moving because the planets aren't moving much because this month we are going to have, by the end of the month, seven cosmic bodies retrograde. Please don't worry about it. One of them is Mercury. Don't worry about it. I'll come to that later. At least it's in Virgo in the sign it rules. That's good. Let's look at point one because on the 1st of August we have the first of two full moons this month and this one is in Aquarius. It's in your third house of communication. So this is um, what needs to change in the way you communicate. Is there an important situation in your life that you'd like to bring closure to and you need to write a letter about it or an email. Letters are old fashioned, we don't. Nobody writes letters anymore, but you know what I mean. A communication to bring something to a finish. What's interesting is that we have a T-square with Jupiter between the sun and the moon for this energy, for this particular full moon. And it's fixed, so that's kind of keeps this whole full moon energy a bit locked up. Now, what this can mean is that because the full moon is in your third house of communication and Mars in Virgo is in your 10th house, but that's trining Jupiter in your sixth house. Mars is energy and assertion, it's helpful. This is something to do with your daily routine. This could be work, job, Maybe there is something you want to cut back on that you're asking them to uh, reduce your hours, for instance, or just do something that just changes it. And I just feel that there is something about travel involved in all of this, not necessarily long distance travel. Sometimes this can be short distance travel, short distance journeys. Maybe you have to travel to work and it's just getting more and more difficult and you've got to find a different way to do it. So there's something of that nature. It's bringing closure to something to do with communication with this particular full moon. Let's look at point two, because point two is the new moon. In Leo, in your ninth house of higher education, of travel, and of also it's about truth and actually the higher echelons of spirituality. It's Leo, it's a new moon. The sun is making a square, which is a hard aspect to our unpredictable planet, Uranus, my big outer boy, this planet of shocks and surprises. Taurus, sixth house. Well, Uranus has already, I'm sure, given you a taste of what it's like to have Uranus in this part of, did I say Taurus? I mean, Uranus has probably already given you a taste of what to expect whilst it goes through the sign of Taurus. Now, basically, you might have found that your day-to-day -day routine keeps changing and that can be good and that can be bad. And it's somehow, I think, linked in with whatever it is that you want to change with regard to that full moon. And this is a new moon, so it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to take things forward, to start afresh. Also, this new moon, remember, the sixth house is about our um, health. Now, Taurus rules the throat and, and this kind of area. A lot of singers are born under the sign of Taurus. A lot of uh, public speakers or anyone who has a particularly good voice will be born under the sign of Taurus. How is your throat area? 
because maybe something unexpected comes up with regards to that with this new moon but because it comes up suddenly the new moon gives you the opportunity to nip it in the bud let's move on to point three and this is august the 23rd when the sun our soul giver our life force our heart our home moves into Virgo in the 10th house. Now the 10th house for you and Virgo is about your career, if you still have one or if you have one. It's also whatever it is in your life you're passionate about. Whatever you love doing, this is where it lives in your chart. So, because it's what puts you out there, what people will know you for. So they'll go, oh yeah, uh, so-and-so who's a Sagittarius, she's really good at crafting or she's really good at dancing. Um, you know, Sagittarians can be quite athletic. So, you know, they have that lovely Jupiter energy. So, you know, <laughs> they could do all sorts of things. So um, the sun moving into your 10th house is shedding light on your career. This is all linking in with that full moon and the new moon. You're gonna to have to unpick this tapestry that I'm weaving and undo the knots that I might be tying in, in different places. But also on the 23rd, this is the day that Mercury, our planet of communication, will go retrograde. Now it's retrograde from the 23rd of this month, so that's, as I say, August, until September the 15th. Please don't worry about it. It's going to give you a chance to think about any decisions you might have made hastily with that full moon and that new moon around your career or your soul path, whatever is your passion. It's going to give you a chance to review anything about all of that subject, to relook at, to redo, to rebrand, renew. <clears throat> so I don't think it'll be that bad because the thing is, Mercury rules Virgo. Uh, it also, as you know, rules Gemini. So it, it likes the attention to detail that the sign of Virgo provides. Also on the 23rd, retrograde Venus, our planet of love and relationship, that is in Leo in your ninth house of higher education and of journeys, makes a hard square. That's a, a really hard, challenging aspect. You know, though, interestingly, sometimes the harder aspects are the good ones because they push us to make decisions and grow. And if we've got all lovely trines and easy aspects, we can tend to sit back and be a bit lazy. It's just, just interesting, interesting sort of thought. But retrograde Venus is going to be squaring Jupiter, my big outer boy Jupiter, our planet of expansion, opportunity and luck. Now you've got Jupiter also in Taurus in your sixth house of health. I know it represents other things, but I'm thinking about your health in this instance. And I just wonder whether there is something bubbling away that you need to pay attention to. The other thing is that your routine, your day-to-day -day routine may be being too restrictive for a loved one. So the kind of negative energy of um, that Jupiter so that Sagittarius, because you like to get out there and go around. And it may be that somebody you're close to, it may just be a good friend, feels a bit left out or neglected by your absence. So <clears throat> let's move on to point four, which is the 27th of August. Now we have two energies for this day. One is that Mars, our planet of energy, action, assertion, sexuality, moves into Libra 
in your 11th house. So this is invigorating anything to do with larger groups, the community at large. It's helping you to be quite assertive out there and make connections with bigger groups of people. Maybe you'll find that you'll be more social at this time of year. It could be something of that nature. And the other thing with the 27th is that the sun in Virgo, in your 10th house, opposite retrograde authoritative Saturn in Pisces in the 4th, is really kind of, um, it's bringing a bit of tension again between what goes on at work or whatever it is that you're passionate about, whatever people know you for, and what goes on at home. Somebody at home may be putting blocks up, just trying to tie you down a bit. And you know, Sagittarius, you're a free spirit. You wanna fly. You wanna get out there and, and soar like an eagle above the sky. So um, that may be a little bit frustrating. Also, we need to look to the 29th of August because Uranus, our big outer boy of the unexpected, I've already talked about him, in Taurus, in your sixth house. Remember, that's your health, service to others, day-to-day -day routine, turns retrograde. So he's another of our outer planets that's going retrograde. And it's from the 29th of August until the 27th of January 2024. I think <clears throat> this may give some unexpected opportunities to find out that there are maybe health issues that have been overlooked. So it could actually turn out to be quite beneficial. So if anything comes up that you think, oh dear, that, that ache or that pain, maybe I should get that checked out. It's a bit like, you know, you know, the gallbladder. We sort of sometimes we get aches around there. Is it gallstones or is it just I've got aches around there? So things like that. And then we need to move on to point five because this is where on the 31st of August, we get the second of our full moons. And this one is a blue moon in the sign of Pisces. And it's in this part of your chart to do with home and family. It's conjunct Saturn, retrograde Saturn in Pisces. Is there something or someone at home that really, I don't know, just gets in your way? That's this feeling I get. Um, maybe it's something. Maybe it's it's a... Some, something restrictive. It just feels like maybe you need to make some changes at home. Maybe the layout of your rooms is not working. Maybe it makes you feel closed in. Is there something you could do, like get rid of some of the clutter and the furniture to give you more space? Because that satin is really holding you back. And also with this full moon, Retrograde Uranus in Taurus does actually make a helpful aspect to a retrograde Pluto, a planet of transformation and personal empowerment in Capricorn in the second house. Now this is about your financial status and also this is about your own personal self-worth. And I think with this particular instance, it's some, I think it'll be some surprising information that comes up about your financial situation, which may be quite good because it's a trying, it's helpful. So, you know, maybe you gain some benefits from whatever you've kicked a fuss up about with regard to whatever else might be going on in your working routine. So let's see a Sagittarius, but there we go. Thank you so much for joining me for your August 2023 horoscope. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, 
please let me know in the comments if you are uh, acclimatizing to my new set and it's a work in progress it's not perfect yet it's not perhaps exactly as it will finally be who knows I don't know I'm just letting it unfold and so in the meantime thanks so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time bye for now